Well guys, off-brand motherboards, should you buy one? Are they actually better than mainstream motherboards from the big brands? This is the topic of today's video. So welcome back at Emotion PSUs and let's get straight into it. First off, I want to say what I consider to be off-brand. So off-brand is not a lesser known brand. By off-brand, I mean a new brand that has just started to make motherboards or really they have been making cheap remake of motherboards. Now, let's expand on that. For example, I do not consider off-brand Biostar. Biostar is a lesser known brand which has been doing motherboards for as long as Asus MSI or Gigabyte and they even make very high-end motherboards. I also do not consider off-brand Colorful, uh, even though many of you probably do not know what Colorful even is, they also make GPUs. I made a dedicated video on their GPUs and they are the biggest selling manufacturer in Asia. So just because we don't have them in the US or Europe, it doesn't mean they're not good brand or they are off brand, if it makes sense. Colorful motherboards are great. Now to mention a few of the off brands that I am mentioning, the main ones that come to my mind and that also were requested by some of you guys in the comments, are Maxan. They especially asked me to take a look at the Maxan B650 or Max Sun. I don't know how it's pronounced. Qingyue, which we have tried a lot in the past. Huanansi, Machinist, and all those brands. Now, these are the main ones. Um, other brands I have not tried. Uh, I have tried some completely unnamed brand motherboards, but we will get to that in a second. So the video is about mostly those four brands. So Qingyue, Machinist, Huanansi, Maxan. They are the most popular ones, the most selling ones on AliExpress. They are readily available worldwide. You can buy them with just two clicks and they are very cheap. A lot of those brands, I'm thinking about Huanansi and Qingyue specifically, they started off making, reusing chipsets for the X99 and X79 motherboards. Now I will have very soon a video uh, dedicated on re-reviewing X79. I recently re-reviewed X99. They are old platforms. Uh, high-end desktop platform, so which took different CPUs from the ones that we usually use in our computers, bigger CPUs, and they had different feature set, etc. But original motherboards were very expensive and were lacking NVMe support, USB-C support, and a lot of things. So what those brands did is they took used chipsets, the chipset is the processor inside the motherboard, and they engineered new motherboards with updated features for them. If you're buying one of those brands for X79 and X99, they have a lineup, even though it's not clear, it's not well explained. So just like ASUS has like the entry-level boards and the high-end boards, they have the same thing uh, on X79 and X99. So you want to get the higher-end motherboards. I have done a few builds with those in the past, they're all on the channel uh, and on Instagram especially, it's where most of my content is by the way. Uh, subscribe to the channel and also check me out on Instagram if you like tech content. Those X79, especially motherboards though, if you're buying from completely off-brand unnamed motherboards, which will have just a marketing name like good motherboards, it's gonna be the name or, or something, I do not recommend you buy them because in the long run they tend to break because the VRMs, which are the tiny chips controlling the voltage, cannot handle power of certain chips, especially if you go ahead and unlock the power limits. So those not really recommended. I recommend if you want to buy X79 or X99 that you buy a branded motherboard. Again, I have had a great experience with Wanansi. I like Qingyue for those motherboards. Machinist also is pretty good and uh, Maxan also, even though it's a bit more expensive, uh, it's pretty good. So those are all recommended from me. Uh, however, steer clear if you find locally on the used market an X79 or X99 from Wanansi and it is from three or four years ago, you can check it by the revision, it's written on the motherboard. Do not buy it because they used to have issues on the VRMs too. And because it was a new company, then I think they made some money by selling those motherboards and then reinvested in uh, actually research and development, R&D, and now they're making decent motherboards. So you wanna buy them now, brand new on AliExpress, do not buy them used on the used market because you're risking it a lot. They are a good buy also because the ones are cheap. Today, I want to talk a lot about uh, modern chipsets with uh, off-brand motherboards. I have tried on the channel Qingyue B660, Qingyue Z790 Snowdream, their top-of-the-line motherboard. I have tried a Qingyue B650, which I did an APU 3D printed build with that came out amazingly. And I have tried a few Huanansi. And uh, what I can say, is let's go in order. So the higher end line, like the Z790s, they are extremely cheap. We are talking just a little bit over a hundred bucks for a Z790. The way I would classify them is they are mid-range Z790. Just like, for example, an MSI Pro Z790, just 
entry to mid-range Z790 is, they would be the same. So they are, of course, not trying to compete with the ASUS Maximus formula, for example, tier of motherboard, top of the line tier. They're not trying to compete with that, but they are trying to take some of the mid-range, but Z-series market. Feature-wise, they are basically the same as an MSI Pro motherboard or an ASUS TUF motherboard, they are the same. They have it all, they have USB-C, they have USB 3.0, they have RGB connectors, they're good. Uh, their BIOS is a lot less intuitive. I recommend you go check out my video about the Qing US No Dream Z790 motherboard because that was tricky to get running. But once it was running and once it was set up properly, I actually think it was running better than some Z790s. Now, if you know, if you've been like watching other tech channels, Intel, has been having a lot of issues with their CPUs, right? Because they are unstable. Um, that's a tricky, tricky subject because it's also due to how they're set in the BIOS. Um, and if they, they, if you set the CPU differently, you can actually fix the CPU if it makes sense. And uh, this Qingyue board, out of the box, well, after spending time trying to get the BIOS right, was running my CPU better, an i9-13900K. It was running it better than on a Maximus formula. <laughs> Uh, from ASUS top of the line. So they are pretty well done because their BIOS is complete. They have all the features of ASUS. It's just more tricky and a lot less user-friendly to set it. But the hardware is good. So Qing Yue 790 is no dream, has my complete approval. And the uh, same goes for their B650. So B650, I recently made a video about like AMD motherboards, what to buy, why X670E and B650E are not a good buy, okay? One user under that video told me that uh, if you're buying ITX, you basically have to buy a B650E because brands are just, uh, since ITX boards are more expensive because they're smaller and you have to pack more circuits in less space. Basically, they are charging more and putting a more expensive chipset into it so that it makes sense more for them economically if it makes sense. And also so they can split lanes, whatever. He told me like, if you want to buy an ITX board, you basically have to buy the motherboard, which you are not recommending. And that's where I told him, listen, I tried out a Qingyue Chinese motherboard and it's actually better than some of those. And so if you want to go ITX, I definitely recommend buying a BC50 from Qingyue, even from Maxan. I don't think they make an ITX current lineup anymore. And also from Huanansi. Huanansi is very good. Uh, issue I had with Huanansi, even though it's a tiny issue, it's worth mentioning, it has terrible RGB controlling. So if you want to control it via the RGB software on the motherboard, it's going to just run terribly. So I recommend getting an external RGB controller if you want to have a pretty RGB. Uh, but with that aside, it's pretty solid. Let's talk about more about these modern sockets. So back in the day, off-brand motherboards had a bad reputation because they used to take used server chipsets, which were not even X79 or X99 really. They would hack the BIOS up, unlock all the features and make those hybrid boards where ECC RAM would run flawlessly and stuff. Basically, it was a very well BIOS modded motherboard with a server socket implanted onto a gaming style designed PCB. If you can't tell by the way I'm saying it, I really think it's cool because I like hardware and I think their programmer is a genius for doing that because I've been BIOS modding things for a long time. And remember, manufacturers are locking us out from a lot of features which we, we could have with just a BIOS mod. Again, I have a video on the channel in which I am literally making an i9-9900K run on a motherboard for an i7 6700K. It was just a BIOS mod away, a uh, Coffee Lake on Skylake mod. What happens is those name branded manufacturers, they talk to Intel and AMD and they have to follow rules. But these half brands, they don't care. They just do whatever they want. It's like the far west. They, they, they just do whatever they want. Sometimes they have more features or the same features for cheaper. And I recommend you buy them actually, because uh, nowadays on AM4 and AM5, they do not use recycled chipsets. They use original chipsets. They just put them in, they make their boards, just copying what the uh, big brands are doing. The factories are probably close to each other. The quality of, of the PCB is very good. The aesthetic is good. And they have the exact same features as name branded boards. So if you're on a budget and if you do not want to use, um, of course, MSI ASUS software for, to control the RGB or to use all the things that they offer, I 100% recommend you buy an off-brand board. I think they are the same board, just cheaper. Uh, you're going to have, of course, less warranty. You're going to have overall less support. It's going to be harder to 
to tweak to make work to, if you want to do overclocking it's going to be a bit different but you can do anything that you can do on a normal board you can do there and nowadays the quality is pretty good you should only look at them as an option uh, instead of entry to mid-range boards of course if you buy a name branded high-end board it's going to be better vrms and it's going to just be better overall but if you're running just for example a ryzen 5 5600x or even a ryzen 7 5700x 3d or a Ryzen 5 7600, or even an APU like I've done in the 3D printed build, which I mentioned before, those boards are gonna be plenty fine. So I do 100% recommend them. But if you've had a bad experience with them, please let me know down in the comments so people can use this video as a resource to see what's going on as well. I will also answer the comments if you have any questions. And uh, one thing though, keep in mind, uh, in the last two years, I think they really made the switch to better motherboards. So if you had a bad experience like five years ago, it may be worth to try again because I didn't have the best five years ago either. And with that said, if you liked the video this far, sorry if it was long, maybe drop a like and a follow, subscribe to the channel, and see you guys soon. Bye-bye.